Hi, Dr. Mike, coming to you from the PDA Cast Studio. It's Friday, and I hope all of you have a terrific weekend. Before you head off, um, I had a listener who was interested in knowing what to do with an 18 month old in the daycare. This is a daycare worker who, who wrote in uh, who's biting other kids. And uh, this is a frequent problem where you have these young children who bite each other or they bite the daycare workers. And there may be other aggressive behavior, too, other than biting. It might be hitting. Uh, it could be kicking. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. And it can be, um, you know, really disruptive for the daycare. And uh, this, these are someone else's children. And so you want to deal with them appropriately. Um, so as we think about this, I think a, go a good place to start is really why is a young child, 18 months old, up to, you know, two, maybe even going on three years old, toddler age, why are they doing this? And there's there's three basic reasons why a child would act out in sort of an aggressive way. Uh, one, and this is most common for the really younger ones, so like an 18-month-old, and that's just to get a response. You know, they haven't really connected that their actions are hurting someone or harming them yet. They're just beginning to get an, an understanding of what's good and what's bad, um, but it's not all the way there yet. And so to some degree, they just know that there's a response that happens. They don't think about it as necessarily a bad action. They just like what they see when they do this behavior. And uh, so that's, that's one reason. Another is just these actions are sort of a means to an end. So there's something I want. Uh, another child has a toy. And I've learned that if I bite, hit, or kick, they're going to drop the toy and go off and running and cry. And there it is. There's the toy. I can play with it now. So it's really uh, an action that they've learned that's a means to an end. And then the third reason is just frustration. The, uh, you know, young kids don't have a lot of communication skills. They're, they're not good at expressing what they're feeling or winning an argument. And so that pinup frustration can come out as activity, and often it's more aggressive activity. And a lot of times these are the older toddlers that you see this. Now, regardless of the reason uh, why they might uh, be exhibiting these behaviors, uh, the intervention is pretty similar for all of them. Um, first, you just want to give a firm no. You know, no. Let them know that you're displeased with that action. You don't want an over-the-top sort of reaction because then you are um, giving them a response that might be amusing to them. So just a firm no is all that you need. And then redirect them. And that's the great thing about these toddlers. They have such a short attention span. It's really easy to get their mind off of what it was that they wanted and get them directed on something else that may be fun and attractive that they could potentially do. So uh, really, a firm no and distraction is, is basic. And you may find yourself doing that over and over again. But as they learn that, they, that the behavior doesn't uh, give them the response that they want, uh, doesn't give them a means to an end. They, they move on to something else. And uh, now the frustration one, it's okay to let them have a temper tantrum. Uh, you just want to make sure they're not hurting anyone else and they're not destroying property. But other than that, if they're crying because they can't communicate and they're upset, at least until they calm down, just let them have their temper tantrum and then you can regroup uh, at a later time. Uh, the other thing I would avoid doing is physically uh, biting them back or hitting them or kicking them in any physical way. One, you're modeling the behavior that you want to get rid of. And two, um, you know, you may hurt the child. And so we don't want to do that. Uh, really what works best, again, is a firm no distraction and uh, then move on from it and be consistent and do that each and every time. Uh, the reason I think it's important to understand why they were exhibiting the behavior in the first place is then you can begin maybe to predict uh, when they would uh, bite or hit or kick someone and maybe fend it off at the pass. Uh, if you notice that they're getting frustrated, start to try to have a conversation with them if, if possible. Um, if they just are bored and they want a response, you know, play peekaboo, find a little game, you know, but, but try to head them off if they look like they're getting ready to bite or hit or kick, sort of preemptively distract them. And if you notice that they want a toy that another child has, you know, if the other child has had that toy for a very long time, this may be a good chance to teach that other child about sharing. Uh, or you may just want to distract uh, the kiddo who's looking at this toy that another kid just started playing with or encourage them to play together and cooperate. Uh, but it does take some, you know, understanding of why they're starting to, to get worked up and may bite, hit, or kick and uh, predicting that behavior and then distracting them 
or intervening in some other way before the behavior happens. So hope that helps. Um, certainly, it, it, sometimes these things happen more at the daycare than at home, or it may only happen at home and not at the daycare, or it could happen at both places. And sometimes parents and daycare providers, preschool teachers all need to work together so that however you are managing this, you're all kind of on board uh, with the same plan. So I hope that helps. And more than that, I hope all of you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, if you get a chance, listen to the podcast, PediaCast. We are wherever podcasts are found. Talk to you later.